follow the leader. Say that with me. Follow the leader. And I've titled today's message. Say that with me. Be a good man. One more time. Be a good man. Ladies, isn't that what you want? Say, don't you want what kind of man? A what kind of man? A, a good man. Women don't want me a bad boy. Well, you might be saying that because you're an absolute nut. Okay? Come on. Be a what kind of man? Good man. A good man. That's the message today. Be a good man. Let's talk about it, Rog. Here we go. We'll put the message together. Now, Vince Lombardi said this, and I took this quote years ago, and I made it part of my life. But as far as Christianity, and this was Coach Lombardi's philosophy. He wanted perfection out of his team. But he knew he couldn't get perfection. So I, I took that quote and I turned it into something from my life. And here it is. When I pursue perfection, who is who? I can catch what? Say that with me. When I pursue perfection, and what's his name? I can catch what? Now say it with me one more time. When I pursue perfection, Jesus Christ, I can catch too many people. Just sorry. Don't set goals in their life. I'm this way. This is the way I've been. I'm always going to be this way. I'm just pathetic. That's a choice you've made. You've chosen to live like that. Lift up your head and look up. And you can go somewhere in your life. Follow him, man. Are you hearing me today? Follow the leader. Y'all hearing the gist of where we're going today? Let's talk about it. Now, Jesus Christ, say that word with me. Boy, that's a, that's a word I wish more people would use. Say it with me. Jesus Christ was what? One more time. Jesus Christ was? Now, loud. Jesus Christ was? He's not like Mohammed that married a nine-year-old. Are you hearing me? Yes or no? Excuse me. Or conquered with the sword. Or lied like a dog. Excuse me. Quote me. Probably get killed for that. Whatever. It's the truth. Jesus Christ was what? He was ethical. He's somebody we can follow. You never have to be ashamed of Jesus. Oh, I'm ashamed of Jesus. You're not a good man then. You don't need to be ashamed of Jesus. Yes or no? Amen. You don't need to make stuff up, flop like a chicken, act like a nut, okay? But to be ashamed of Jesus, there's nothing to be ashamed of about Jesus. Let's talk about it. Jesus was human. He was the God-man. He was human, born of a virgin. The Holy Spirit, the living God, was his Father. Now, that's a hard mystery to understand. Because Jesus is God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But all three, God gave His Son. Jesus came. The Holy Spirit was the Father, not Joseph. And so Jesus was human, but He was also what? He was what? You need to get that down. That Jesus is God. Get that down. That's what your Bible teaches. Jehovah's Witnesses, I'm just against everybody today. Ain't I? Jehovah's Witnesses don't teach that at all. Sorry. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and my Father are one. I mean, there's so many verses I could quote, it'd be, it's not even funny, okay? So listen, he was human, and he was God, and this is the crazy thing. Look at this. Say that with me. Yet he's still played by the what? And a lot of times we say, well, you know, Jesus, you know, he was human and everything, you know, but he was God, so that's why he could do stuff, you know, and he was, he was you know, he could do stuff, and I can't do stuff, you know, because I'm just all human and screwed up. I don't, here's the way I think of it. Here's the way I think of it. If Gary was human and Gary was God, there'd be a trail of people that I would have burned to death. Yes or no? <laughs> that I would have struck my light. What did you say to me? Bang! So don't pull that. If I was human and God, I'd be worse than I am now. <laughs> Y'all hear me or not? No, he chose to be ethical. Guys, he chose to be ethical. When people ran their mouth to him, spit on him, called him a liar, 
excuse my language, I'm sure you heard it as a child when Joseph was his stepfather, they, they called him a bastard child. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. It's not this Joseph's son. Okay? Just because the Bible doesn't tell you everything, I'm going to tell you something right now. It was no picnic growing up Jesus. Did you hear me, yes or no? But he played by the rules. Ethical. What's the word ethical mean? It means living in accordance with the principles of, say this with me, what? Right and what? That's what ethical is, living within those principles. Plain English, say it with me. It's doing the what? Right thing. Right thing. It's walking with integrity. Follow the leader. Be a good man. Integrity means that your life's not always falling apart. Integral, having your life together. Hello. Hello, it's okay. It's okay. Tell him I said, hey. <laughs> you need a phone to go off every once in a while. Don't do it much, but it does make it sort of funny. Here we go. Ethical character communicates a powerful message to people. Say that with me. Ethical character communicates a powerful message to, to others. You've heard it said, your life speaks so loud that I can't hear what you're saying. People, people live like they want to live, but they want to talk about Jesus. Well, I'm sorry, I can't hear a thing about Jesus because of the way you live in your stinking life. And that can be said of many today. You could not say that about Jesus. Amen. He's the one I'm going to follow right here. Let's look at our own culture for just a moment. Just some stats to, to prove the point that ethics and being ethical is what our world needs. It's what our town, Inglewood, Florida, needs. That's why I'm proud of Elise. Let's have more green dots in Inglewood. Let's have more people looking out for other people. Do you think that's what Jesus would do? Absolutely he would. This is the right thing to do. We want this to be this kind of community. Amen. Now, this ain't heaven. This ain't utopia. No. But it's pretty close, though. <laughs> pretty nice around here. Amen. Come on. A recent survey of 25,000 students from 70 high schools across America found that 95% had participated in some type of cheating. That is a high number, isn't it? Only 5% are not cheating at some point. Let's look at our own culture for a moment. A recent survey among Americans found that 76% believe that morals are getting worse. Let's take a quick poll. How many of you think morals are getting worse? Let's just do a quick poll. Uh, it's probably about 90. Keep looking. A recent large-scale survey of managers found that 76% managers admit to sacrificing long-term values for short-term earnings. It's about what we're going to get this quarter. Let's push. Let's do whatever we got to do. What? What about the long term? What about the future? What about our reputation? What about who we are? What about what we're trying to build here? Yes or no? Amen. We started Fellowship Church years ago. Won't long into it. We decided we're going to be debt free for the glory of God. Had a group of people come to my office one day. And tell me that if we did, they were in our church. They said if we didn't borrow money, a lot of them were going to be leaving. Yeah, said that to me. At a very pivotal time in our ministry. Said, matter of fact, some are even praying right now in a prayer meeting. I said, well, you can go ahead and tell them to get up off their knees because we're not borrowing a dime. Long-term values matter. Say that with me. Long-term values matter. If you said, I do, then do it. Amen. Yeah, but my marriage ain't too good right now. How about you work at it? How about that? Yes or no? Hello? Ethical. Tough message, huh? Yes or no? It's not easy. A recent survey of people around the world asking, what is the world's biggest problem? Around the world, what's the world's biggest problem in the world? Here was the answer. Number one answer, say it with me, was what? What do you think about that answer? 
Pretty big answer, isn't it? Ethics, morals, and character equal this, culture. Say that with me. Ethics, morals, and character will equal your what? You want to change the culture? Ethics, moral, character. You want to change your high school? Ethics, morals, character. You want to change your house? Ethics, morals, character. You want to change your church? Ethics, morals, character. You want to change your football team? Ethics, morals, character. Any questions? Be surprised how great you can be with ethics, morals, and character. Amen. Followers of Jesus Christ who have ethical character will shine as bright lights in a dark place. All the world's just getting so bad. Well, there's another way to look at that. I can shine so bright now. Amen. And they don't need your big fancy speeches or my big fancy speeches. I went to McDonald's yesterday before our men's prayer breakfast. And one of the workers there who I love, all of them, doesn't matter, stuck a sticker on me. Mr. Incredible, right there. I love that people can walk up to me and stick a sticker on me. I'm the pastor of Fellowship Church. Don't touch me. You kidding me? I want people to touch me. Amen. I want people to enter my space without me having to give some big, long speech. That's what this does. Are y'all listening? Not that I'm some great example, but I want to be. I want this for my life. Amen. Follow the leader. Be a good man. Be a good man. Number one, how do you do it? Are you ready? Here we go. We're going to walk through now. Are you ready? Yes or no? If I ain't convinced you this necessary, then I didn't do a good job. But if I've convinced you that this is good, this is what we need, then I'm asking you to listen. These aren't hard. You can write them down, do whatever, get the message online. And again, welcome to the online audience. We're really glad. Last week, just on Facebook alone, we had like 950 views of our messages. That's great. That's great. That's just one avenue. But we're excited about that. Amen. And being connected with people. And you can write us at box 121. I, I, I check the mail. I read everything. And then I share it with the staff. Number one, to be ethical. To be a person of character and morals. And to follow the leader. To follow Jesus. If you want to do it his way, watch it. Say that with me. Sincerity is a must. Another word for sincerity is authentic. Another word for sincerity is real. Say real. Again. Again. Be what? Be real. So much plastic in the church. I don't even know anymore because this is where I worship. I don't know. I don't, but I do watch TV sometimes, and I go, what the heck? What is that? Are you kidding me? And people cheering on that? Maybe I'm an odd duck. I don't think so. I think more people think like I when they watch some of that mess. Be sincere. Be real. Jesus did not do ministry to give a show. He didn't do it to get a show. This is not showtime here on Sunday morning. I want to do a great job. I pray to do a great job. Not a good job, not a halfway job. I want to do a great job when I stand up here. I want to do a, you say, well, you don't do a great job. Well, it ain't because I didn't want to. <laughs> I wanted to. Prayed about it. Sometimes I don't hit the ball out of the park, maybe, but every time I swing, I want it to go out. I don't want just a, a single. I want it out of the park. Amen. I want that out of our band. But I don't pressure them. I don't say, y'all have to do better. You have to do a good job. It's amazing when you love on them and show them they have value, that they matter, and that we love what they do, and they're helping us, how much better they just keep getting and getting and getting and getting and getting. Amen. He didn't do ministry for a show to give a show. He came back to his hometown, Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue. That's Grand Central Religious Station in Nazareth. And he stood up to read. So he's back home. Push. And all bear witness of Jesus' words. They wondered at his, what kind of words? Gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. And then they said, is not this Joseph's son? He said unto them, now this is Jesus knowing their heart. You'll surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. 
Whatsoever we've heard you do in Capernaum, an area around that area. Do also here in your hometown. He was basically saying, I know what you're thinking. You came to see me for a show. You didn't come here to hear my gracious words. You didn't come here to hear me uh, give instruction. You didn't come here to let me teach you how to grow. You came here to watch somebody flop like a chicken or do something, didn't you? Okay? Or to run or to do whatever, the blind heal. And who wouldn't want to see that, right? Jesus said, what about me? You want to see me? And you know what he said? He said, Verily I say unto you, no prophets except in his own country. Because I grew up here, you treat me like an old shoe. That's what Jesus said. It ain't showtime, Jesus said. And all the synagogue, when they heard his, these words, all they knew exactly what he was saying. They were filled with what? Wrath. They wanted to kill him. Matter of fact, they, they, they took him out to a cliff. I've been there. At Nazareth is up. You have to go up, 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 and there it says. They took him off to the brow of the hill, was going to throw him down. Matter of fact, one of the bus trips I took to Nazareth one time, there was the head of a dead donkey laying beside the road. Somebody got really ticked off at their donkey. Yeah, just a head, not the body. Head laying there by the road. I mean, have you ever seen one of those laying by the road? I had never seen a head of a donkey laying by the road. I'm driving by the road, now. there's the donkey's head. Oh, my gosh. That'll make you rethink where you're at. I'm just saying. But anyway, they took him and tried to kill him, but he escaped out of their midst. Amen. You'd be surprised how God's going to catch your back, and you're going to be just fine if you don't put on a show. Y'all hear me or not? Be real. But it's harder being real. Long-term goals. It's worth it. Number two, you want to be ethical, real? You want to be like Jesus? You want to be a good man? Say that with me. Honesty is a what? Now, guys, I know nobody's perfect. That's not what we're saying. I am saying this. Jesus is. If I pursue perfection, I'll catch what? Excellence. If I pursue, well, nobody's perfect. Everybody does it. You're going to pursue <laughs> the gutter. You're going to catch the gutter. You hear me, yes or no? You're going to catch nothing except diseases or something, okay? All right, don't do that. Honesty. Jesus did not tolerate the taking advantage of people financially in the name of religion. How do you think he's feeling now, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Why do we say here, if you can't give cheerfully, keep it? Because we want to be honest. If we can't afford, it costs us about six grand a month to keep that campus looking good outside. That's a lot of money. But there's more to it than cutting grass. There's keeping trees alive. There's stuff that I would kill everything. I don't know if you're like that or not. I'd put too much pH or whatever they tell you to use or whatever. I don't know. But you know what? If we can't cheerfully pay for it, then a bunch of us will get out there and cut it. Did you hear me? Yes or no? And we'll only have like just a few trees left probably, but whatever. But we're not going to cheat to pay the bills. Did you hear me or not? We're not going to take from widows. We're not going to take from the single person that's trying to pay their bills. I think it's good to give. I think it's part of life. You need to learn to give. But even Jesus said, look at the widow's might. Look, she gave all she had. Our heart, right? But man, we want to be honest. Yes or no? But that ain't just the church. That's us, guys. Standing against. Jesus stood against those who took advantage of people. In his day, the religious people were huge. They, they were a power. Jesus went into the temple of God in Jerusalem. <clears throat> I mean, that is Grand Central religion today even. You know all the hoopla that just was made over moving our embassy from Tel Aviv, which is crazy to have it in Tel Aviv. I've been there many times. And they put it where it ought to be, Jerusalem. Jerusalem's the center of Israel, not Tel Aviv. But because it moved to Jerusalem, did you see all the uproar, yes or no? What I'm saying is Jerusalem is Grand Central Station for several religions. Jesus went into the temple, the Jewish temple. He cast all of them out that sold and bought in the temple. He overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats that sold doves. This is what Jesus said. 
He said, and he also drove them out with a cord, with, with a whip. What? Oh, it mattered to him. Matter of fact, he said this. It's written, my house should be called a house of prayer. And you made it a den of thieves. Wonder what Jesus is saying today. You think he's saying that sometimes? You know the number one peop reason people don't come to church? Because of the ethics of Christians. Let's just do a quick poll. How many have ever been really disappointed in some kind of business transaction with a Christian? Let me see your hand. I've been really disappointed, preacher. Really disappointed. Now let me go and put some other hands up. How many of you just been disappointed with people in general doing that? Let me see your hand. Don't just blame it on a Christian. Here's the point. There's no difference between us many times. Our ethics are the same. They ought not be the same, guys. Hello? If the devil ain't your daddy, quit acting like it. Are you celebrating your father the devil's day today? Are you celebrating your father God today? Then be honest. Be honest. Number three. Number three, with Jesus, and it should be with us, if we're going to be people of character and ethics, say that with me. The truth of God's Word is a must. Say it with me. The truth of God's Word is a must. If it says it, that's what it means. Quit fighting it. Quit trying to get around it. I know it says, thou shalt not lie, but you know, I just like to lie. You know, it says number seven, thou should not commit adultery, but the little sweet thing down the hall has got a pretty skirt on. It's because you're a bum. You're a bum. Quote me. You're a bum. Did you hear me say? You're a bum. Can you say that with me? You're a About four of you. I'll say it loud enough for all of us, okay? What's God's word say about right and wrong? It's a must. It's a must. Amen. Say. Jesus openly denounced and confronted hypocritical religious leaders for twisting and perverting God's word. And I think it's interesting. I mean, he went straight to the religious leaders in the crowd. He didn't, you know, he didn't go to the fringe. He was out here helping those with the struggles. But when it came to denouncement, but he went right to them, right to their throat. This is how much he believes this. And one of my favorite passages of scripture, in case some of you don't think Jesus is a man, well, I'd like to see you go in the temple of Jerusalem and do what he did. Okay? You wouldn't even get in the door. All right? But look at this speech he gave right there in Jerusalem, in the temple, right there in that area. You blind guides, these are the leaders. You strain at a gnat. Can't have a gnat in your tea. You got your little strainer to get those out of there because you can't have nothing to do with a dead body. But you're so stupid, your way you live in your life, you're swallowing a camel. Woe to you, scribes and her her uh, Pharisees, Hebrew. you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but inside is full of extortion and excess. Wow. Woo. Thou blind Pharisee, clean first that which is within the cup and the platter. Work on the inside of you, that the outside may be clean what? Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you're like under whited tombs, sepulchres, which indeed, beautiful, look at the pretty tomb, but inside are full of dead men's stinking bones. Wow. Hypocrisy and iniquity. Even so, you also appear at righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So Jesus confronted this. It was a must. Say that with me. Never in written history was a group of religious hypocrites so soundly and severely rebuked. And these are the same ones that killed him. Standing for right, doing the right thing, it's probably going to cost you. That's the price of being a good man. Did you hear me? Number four. Oh, by the way, this message, where did it come from? All on the life of Jesus. I didn't hang this on Gary. Ugh. No, this is hung on the shoulders of Jesus. Got it? Yes or no? I don't like your message. Well, then you didn't like his shoulders. 
This is what I found. Number four, compassion set with me for people is a what? If I'm going to be ethical, a person of character, and to value, I must love people. Jesus is willing to risk his life for his friends and even sinners. He spent his life doing that. Then after that, he said to his disciples, now look, we got to go back to Judea. we got to go back to Jerusalem area. His disciples said, Master, don't you remember the speech he gave last week? Okay? You really ticked some people off down there last week. Okay? And you're saying we're going back? They want to kill you? Which means we're probably going to get it too. Can't go there. But Jesus said, our friend Lazarus sleeps. But I go that he may awake from the sleep. And here's his disciples. They're hilarious. They said, Lord, if he's sleeping, that's good. Let's don't wake him. <laughs> Jesus meant he's dead. He has died. Okay? But they're like, we're good. We don't need to go there. He's sleeping. It's all good. Let's don't go wake him. But Jesus went right back into the, uh, the mouth of the enemy. And he called Lazarus forth. Matter of fact, before he ever did that, he was, he was with her, the family. And he said this, shortest verse in the Bible, verse 35, say it with me. Jesus wept. He cared for people. He loved people. And then said the Jews. The Jews looked at Jesus. The Jews, not his disciples, the people around at the wake, the people that were at his tomb. They said, wow, look how Jesus loved him. Can they say that of us? Look how they, he loves people. And guys, I didn't, I didn't grow up loving people. I grew up not knowing how to love people. Any love I have is because of his shoulders. Amen. And I still got room, room, room to grow. That's what I want people to say of me. He was bald. He was mean. He was tough. He was all that. End of the day, I hope they say, man, he loved people. What I want you to say is he loves me. I want you to feel that Pastor Gary loves me. I matter to Pastor Gary. Doesn't mean I'm always going to agree with you. Doesn't mean I'm not going to bother you sometimes. You ever get bothered by some people sometimes? I'm no different than those people. Except I talk too much. But that's what I want to be known by. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, they did what? They what on Jesus? They what? They believed on Jesus because of his what? Love. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what he did. He came back and he raised Lazarus from the dead. He's terrible. He cried at the funeral. Then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees a council and said, what do we? Look at this scripture. For this man does many miracles. Look at this next verse. Look at this next verse. Say it with me. If we let thus alone, all men will what? And the Romans will come away and take away both our place and our nation. Guys, you know how we can radically change Inglewood? Being ethical, having character, being people of value. When people come here, they feel loved, not like they're being robbed. Amen. They can feel like when they walk in here, they're just as important as me or as you. Amen. Everybody matters. Say that. Everybody. This is a radical message, isn't it? And guess what? If we love, many will believe on him. Many will believe on him. Say it with me. Many will believe on him. How many have believed? You become a believer or a solid believer since you put your, uh, by putting your faith in Christ here at fellowship or, or by growing tremendously. Can I see your hand? Let me see some hands. Look at that. Many will believe on him. Amen. Yes or no? That's what we want. The scribes and Pharisees brought him a woman taking an adultery. Roger, we're going to pass through that. The point is the woman taking an adultery He said, you without sin cast the first stone. Remember? And then he bowed down and wrote something in the sand. And they said, but Moses' law says we're supposed to do this. 
And that's when he said, you without sin cast the first stone. They all dropped their stones and turned away. And what did he tell the woman? He said, where are your accusers? He says, I don't condemn you. Go your way. But then he said this, go and what? Sin. Jesus is the last person that will put a rubber stamp on your sinful behavior. Jesus is the last person that will put a rubber stamp on your sinful behavior. Yeah, but he forgave the adulterous woman because she wanted forgiveness. And she wanted to do right. You understand? Don't think you'll ever be ethical by not wanting forgiveness and doing right. You'll never be that. Yes or no? Be a good man. Number five, God's purpose, say it with me, God's purpose is a what? Jesus kept his focus on God's purpose and plan for his life no matter how hard it became. His purpose was a must. Is God's purpose for you a must? Good, I love to see the nodding heads and the yes is coming. And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem. Jesus went before them. They were amazed. As they followed, they were afraid. He took again the 12. He began to tell them what's going to happen. Guys, I know what's going to happen. Saying, we're going to go to Jerusalem. It's all coming to a head now. This is why I came. To seek and to save that which was lost. I came to give my life a ransom for many. He said, we're going in the Son of Man. That's himself. His favorite name for himself. His favorite name wasn't, look at me, I'm the Son of God. <laughs> His favorite name for himself was, I'm like you. That was his, say that with me. I'm like, how much more we could grow our church if we said, I'm like you. I'm like you. That's what people say about me sometimes. Well, you're like me. Yeah. And a lot of you, I'm worse than you, okay? Pray for me. I've got problems. I do. I still struggle. My struggle is right here. You hear me? He said, we're going to go to Jerusalem. The Son of Man is going to be delivered to the chief priests, the same ones I told off. They're about to get me. <laughs> the scribes, they're going to condemn me to death. They're going to deliver me to the Gentiles. They're not going to do it themselves because they can't have nothing to do with that, of course. But they've got it all schemed, all, all arranged. They're going to mock me. They're going to scourge me. They're going to spit on me. They're going to kill me. But the third day, listen, I'm going to rise again. He didn't let anything get in the way of his plan that God had for his life. It came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. Say that with me. He steadfastly set his face to go to. Be a good man. Steadfastly set your face towards that. Do the right thing. Amen. Last, message, last point. Say that with me, and that's probably the biggest one. Here it is. Humility is a, one more time, one of the number one things the world would say about the church is that the church is full of themselves. The church thinks that they are what? Better than I am. Yes or no? How many would say you believe that? That's what, 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 what a lot of them would say. They're better than me. Or they think they are, right? That's what I thought when I went to that country church after Mama had been watching Billy Graham that night on TV drunk. I went not to get any help. I went to keep some preacher from taking our last dollar. But the thing that overwhelmed me was the people were regular folks and they loved us. They didn't judge us like dogs. They didn't look at my long hair, which I wish I had now. If I have anything against that church, as they told me that it's a shame for a man to have long hair. So I cut off all my hair, and it's been gone ever since. <laughs> Horrible. But anyway, Jesus humbled himself, guys. He, he even submitted to the authorities to let somebody torture and crucify him. Being humble doesn't mean you can't speak your mind and, and stand for right. That's what I tried to do at the county commission this week. But at the end of the day, I do have to humble myself with what decisions they make, even if they're bad decisions. Amen? Doesn't mean I can't try. But even here in 2, Peter says you were called because Christ suffered for us, leaving us a what? And this is a man that walked with him. That you should follow in his what? Peter said he didn't do any sin. 
He never sinned when I saw, and he never did ever. Peter said, boy, I did plenty. Neither was guile ever in his mouth. Nothing ever came out of his mouth that wasn't right for him to say. Who, when he was reviled, people got in his face, he didn't revile back at them. When he suffered, he didn't threaten them back. He committed himself to him that judges righteously. Guys, I don't have this all down. But I've got a, I've got a path I can look to. I can, I can pursue perfection, Jesus. And I can catch what? Excellence. Did you hear the message today? Follow the leader. Be a good man. Jesus in his own self bore our sins in his own body on the cross. That we being dead to sins, we should do what? Live unto what? By whose stripes you and I are healed. You can do anything for the Lord. You can live for the Lord. You can go through suffering, hurt, pain, loss, struggle, and you can still be a good man. Did you hear me? Or a good woman. You pursue perfection, Jesus. And I'll guarantee it, you'll catch excellence. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for his word this morning. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning on our beautiful 15 and a half acre campus in the Bullseye of Rotunda, West Florida at 140 Rotunda Boulevard West. Early worship begins at 8.30 a.m. with our morning worship service beginning at 10.30 a.m. Between these two services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you are looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would just like to pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fcinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.